It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And I am back in my front garden where it all began about five years ago with the succulent tips of the day. I was looking at the analytics Hannah showed me on the computer and it was fascinating to see all the minutes and all of the hours that you all are watching of the videos. And it makes me so happy to know that the message that I'm spreading about how easy it is to work with these plants has spread far and wide. One thing that, that I thought was really curious and interesting though was that over 50% of you that watch the videos are not subscribed to my channel. Weird, I know, right? So if, um, if, it's, if it's okay, you know, you don't mind hitting that subscribe, it gives me a better idea of, of how, many are, how many are following. So I'd love to, I'd love your voice to be heard. Um, this little area right here is something that I have reworked for you in videos at least three times. Um, and it's always an issue. These aeoniums always outgrow this bed. This is so shallow here because of the footings for the, this, um, these pillars. I've got about two inches of dirt with which I can work with. And look at, look at the lushness. It's just, just crazy. But when we pull the trash cans through the gate, if the aeoniums are running over, they get hit with the wheels of the trash can. And it's just, it's just a pain. So I, I have been instructed by my dear husband to keep this bed under control for ease of manipulation with those with those wheels. So what do you do? Um, you just dig in, that's what you do. Aeoniums are summer dormant. It is now the end of February, so they are in full growth mode. And, whoop, so I'm just gonna yank them out. Oh, and looky here. I broke the most gorgeous Talavera pot a few years ago, but I didn't throw it away. I just staged it, you know, cute here in the garden. So we'll do that too at the end. I'll just set these pieces off to the side. It looks like my broken pot may have gotten broken again. Um, somebody asked in or suggested in a video recently that rather than manually pick up all the leaves, out of the garden and detritus that I use a blower. I do use a blower to blow off driveways and sidewalks, but when it comes to the planting beds, a blower won't cut it. If I send air down there, it is just gonna disrupt all my rocks. The leaves and detritus are gonna fly everywhere and I'm still gonna have to pick it all up and out. Also, I like grooming by hand. It gives me great satisfaction to get in there, to look at my plants, to get close, to see what's going on, to check for bugs and diseases, and the spawn of Satan, snails, um, and just put everything to rights with my own two hands. So remember, sometimes your entire bed does not need to be reworked. As in this case, I'm only going to take this a certain distance just what's overflowing the banks. There we go. Now, wow, um, I'm not hating that. I don't know, you know, I don't know how much of this I'm even gonna put back. I think I'm gonna take this one too because it just, it has a lot of detritus. Look at that. This needs to be, really, really needs to be cleaned up. A lot of dead leaves. Is this hurting anything, you know, are these dead leaves hurting anything? No, they're not, except that they can be fodder for mealybugs and aphids and other, other pests, um, but they're really not hurting anything. It's more of an aesthetic thing. I just like things to be clean and tidy in my garden. So I'm gonna go through here real quick and I'm just gonna pick out, you know, all of those spent leaves. It doesn't really take that long. Pull a few little weeds that I see And then, I mean, you know as well as I do that I could spend hours out here, couldn't I, in this little area? I could get in there and I could really go to town. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm not going to go to that much trouble. I'm just going to give this bed now, that spent bloom's going to go, kind of an overview. 
cut down these spent aloe blooms a little closer. Why? Because it just doesn't look good. When your aloes have finished blooming, remember these are repeat bloomers. They're gonna come back every year and bloom and bloom and bloom. So when they're done, just cut them down as close to the plant as you can. This Synendenium grantii looks a little not great, but that's because it's winter time and we've had some cold evenings. And this being a tropical plant, if it gets cold like below 40 degrees, it's going to drop all its leaves. This looks to be kind of dead, so I'm just going to pull those little spindly branches off. But I can see new growth coming at all of the joints. And within another month or so, this will be all leafed out again and just gorgeous. So I'm not worried about that. Okay, now... Now that I've pulled out all those offending aeoniums, what's left? When I look down inside here, you know, I see some kind of, see some gaping wounds that I'm not loving. So I'm going to take some of the nicer, bigger aeoniums and work with them as cuttings. These are little air roots and you can leave those on or clip them off. It doesn't really matter. Here in the land of milk and honey, I'm not going to wait for that wound to harden off before I reset this cutting. I'm just going to go ahead and scratch up the surface of the soil, which is really, really soft, and just tuck it right back in. And you can keep doing this with as many of your aeoniums as you want. You know, I think this aeonium is going to bloom out pretty soon. Why do I think that? because of how tight all of this little new growth is. I think she's getting ready to bolt. So I don't think I'm gonna put her back in there because I don't wanna have to take it out again after it blooms. This one looks good. So I'm just gonna cut off that hot mess. Clean up all those dead leaves. I don't see any bugs or anything, looks healthy. And there's a little baby plantlet growing off of the stem right there. I'm just going to let that ride because this baby's young and I don't think it's going to survive on its own yet. It still needs its mama. All right, now let's restage. Uh-oh, I have a weed. Oh, Lord. Get my multi-tool out and I got this this dandelion from the root, which is so gratifying, isn't it? Get that weed, pick up those little leaves, and then restage my, my broken talavera. Well, this is like a puzzle. That doesn't fit. This must be broken. Must go like... No, that doesn't fit either. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set that piece there. Just like that. Does that fit? No, no. Okay, so these, these two broken pieces are going to go somewhere else. But I'm going to take another decent looking aeonium. Oh, here's a good one. Do a little snip and clip. Okay, now right here at the edge of the edge of the uh, break, I'm going to stick this aeonium in to cover it. So now what it looks like is that I've got, got these beautiful pots set in the garden. You can't tell it's broken. So I'm going to take some more of the aeonium, and you could do any plants you want, but I'm going to use the aeonium since I have them right here. And I'm going to tuck some more inside. Oh, also, Greg and I, in a couple of days, we're heading up to Northern California to our ranch for a couple weeks of R&R. &R. We are so excited about that. So I'm going to be doing a maintenance tomorrow in La Jolla and I'm going to get as many videos in the can as I possibly can and give you as much content as is possible while I'm gone. But if it's not every single day, don't worry, we're okay. We're just R&Ring. 
Okay, take another one right there. So now all of this, oh, I've got some beautiful, beautiful aeoniums to clean up and move around. I'm so excited about that. See, that's the beauty of this too. Once you get some plants started in an area where they're happy, you'll have plant material to give and gifts to give to people and neighbors um, to put in other areas of your garden for months and years to come. Before I sign off, I want to show you the other side. I did, did this to the other side of the garden last summer. And I'm not going to lie, it looked a little rough. It probably wasn't the best time to do it. The plants got a little burnt because, as I told you, aeoniums are summer dormant. So they got a little bit fried. Uh, I'll show you how it looks now that the plants have established... Um, non-dormancy you know now that they're in the in the growing mode we'll check and see if they've established any roots and what's happening also remember the myrtillo cactus crest that fell in the the pool in la jolla well this is actually the maintenance that i'm doing tomorrow it's been three months it was um around thanksgiving when hannah jumped into the pool and recovered this hundred pound cactus from the bottom it's been sitting here in my front yard for three months and it is very much alive so that blows my mind i'm going to buy a pot for it tomorrow we're going to plant it up and uh, give it a second chance at life let's take a look over here now I haven't done anything here since last summer and you can kind of tell because look, I've got some little weeds, little grooming that I need to do, but all of the plants are just so perky. The aeoniums look so good, so lively. Let's, uh, I also reset this Crassula ogre ears. And no, well, there's a, there's a little bit of root right here, but the base actually is a little bit squishy and rotted. Even though the plant doesn't look any worse for the wear, I am going to grab my clippers and I'm gonna trim until I find healthy tissue. See that black? That is not healthy tissue. Let's keep trimming up about an inch at a time. Oh, there we go. Nice, clean, healthy tissue. Now, I want to give this plant the best shot. Um, and since it had experienced some rot, I'm gonna go ahead and put this plant in the garage and give it a chance to harden off um, before I put it back in the ground. But look at all along the trunk, cause this was kind of laying on the ground, is throwing off all these little roots. Where there is a will, there is a way with these plants. And look at the condition of the plant. Look how healthy and happy it looks, despite rotting from the bottom. Isn't that amazing? All right, let's see what else is going on here. Let's check an aeonium. Oh, that's in there, that's not coming out. Here's one that's gonna come out for us. Okay. Just like over on the other side, we've got detritus, you know, the dead leaves. Yuck. Ugh. But look at all of, look at all those roots that are growing. This is definitely getting its legs, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? From a cutting, and you can see how the cutting hardened off. See that callus, like that stump right there? No problem, no fuss, no muss, hardened right off. And now the roots are forming. So all is looking well in my cutting garden. I uh, am very excited. I'm gonna take some time to clean up the mess that I made and then get to the store and then get dinner made. Thanks everybody for following. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And for those of you that have, thank you so much. Bye guys.